book titled Paris Maintenant, Musée de l'Electronique, published in Montreal by Louise Cotto, Editrice in 1990, and I just passed this around. Again. So there's much more that I could have told you about his illustrious career, but we'll let him do the talking. Thank you very much. Please put your hands together. Thank you. Uh, well, can I speak? Yes. Start standing up a little bit. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to talk to you about this instrument of music. And uh, my lecture is uh, already done when I said this is an instrument of music. So, and this is all the only thing I will try to, to, uh, to explain. Maurice Martineau was born in 1998, and uh, he was raised in a musical atmosphere. His elder sister, Madeleine, uh, was uh, teaching piano and uh, solfege and trying to use the very uh, new, at the time, Montessori uh, theories of uh, teaching. And, uh, well, Maurice was raised in this and he learned cello. And he also learned how to teach a little bit. But finally, but when he was very young, he liked very much to play at Morse, at sending messages through the Morse system with his sister, Ginette. <laughs> and uh, they were very lively young people, uh, so, so lively that once the, uh, the parent decided to punish them and to put them one in, in his room, uh, in the other room. But Maurice find, found a way to communicate with his sister, having in his in in his uh, uh, in his room, excuse my very poor English, well, something like a hole in in the wall, where he could let uh, cord uh, be suspended with uh, plomb, uh, lead, lead, lead at, uh, and then. <laughs> came to the toilet room in, in the, the, the lower uh, floor. So by moving the cord from one letter here, corresponding to what was there, another letter, he could write a message that way. Yeah. <laughs> and very funnily enough, you find something like that here in this instrument. You ask for yourself, why do I say that? Well. Uh, now, I'll leave this, that story and we'll come back later to it. So, when Maurice Martineau was uh, called for uh, to go to the war, this was at the end, almost the end of the war, uh, around uh, 1918, before that he was too young. He decided to be attached to the wireless uh, telegraphic uh, Post, mm -hmm. and uh, because he knew about something of it, and also he brought his cello to uh, with him. And sometimes uh, he told me that he gave some concerts in some villages. But his the basic uh, attachment, I guess, big so, was communicating through telegraphic system, through the mall system. At the beginning of his work, he used to use a, a, a device making a very s stupid noise. So nothing came to his mind from that. But later on, close to the end of the war, came the heterodyne system uh, with uh, modul uh, frequency mod modulations. Then he could he had to look for the frequency on which he, he would send the message. The, the, the frequency nobody else knows because the way he had before could not, uh, anyone could get it. So looking for the, for, for the pitch. Okay, so then he would send his message this way. He thought, well, this is interesting. As a pedagogue, he thought perhaps the very 
small, the very subtle moves of frequency could be interesting to develop the ear of the of the students. And it's and that's that's all for the moment. When the war finished, he thought, well, I should make maybe I could make an instrument of music for this. And now I will skip a few uh, chapters <laughs> and, uh, arrive to the fact that finally, in 1928, he could present, he could uh, give the first concert using this uh, a device that would look like what I was talking about with his, uh, when he was communicating with his sister. It was a sort of you know, a stem like this, with a thread going in the stem, going down, and then continuing on the floor in a very small keyboard, imitation of keyboard, design of keyboard. And having his, uh, his uh, a ring in the air and this thread, he could see on the floor, well, if I press down on here, I w if I press on, on the device that would give me the sound, this would be a G. If I pull it a little, a G sharp or F. So that's the, the idea. Now, let's say I am still, I come back to the war. I, uh, <laughs> quite uh, quite simple, not really artist artistic. What he developed then, let us say that what you just heard now could be compared to the string of a violin because I determine the frequencies, I determine notes here with my left my right hand. <laughs> They're talking to each other. <laughs> By the way, it's funny because what you hear is a theremin. The theremin was invented just a little before the old Martineau. And Maurice Martineau heard the theremin and thought, well, I like this instrument. It's really fascinating. But I would like to have something that makes uh, music more precisely. That would be safer for pitch and for that kind of thing. Anyway, I come back to what we are talking about. Oh. Uh, so I would compare this part of the instrument to the string of the string instrument. Now, what about the bow? Uh, there is here a small device that perhaps can be seen on camera. And the people here in the room could come after and see it. It's very small, it's about two centimeters high. And when I press down on this, I can press very slowly. So slowly that you may have the feeling that I'm doing nothing, but as you can see, there is a sort of crescendo. So it's interesting to see that there is a very progressive crescendo, very, very, very progressive, so progressive that it's not always useful to do it in music. But the reason why I, I did it is just to show you how sensitive it is. If I, uh, I, I had to carry things uh, just before, and uh, well, if I don't know, uh, if I'm not uh, breathing well, let me tremble a little, and you will hear it, like like the bow on the string. Uh, the musician is nervous. <laughs> 